Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're talking about grammar, specifically how to fix a comma splice. Commas are assessed on every single grammar exam out there and even on some subject area exams. So I'm gonna show you today how to spot the comma splice and fix it. Let's get started. All right, so let's just take a look at our blueprint for the Praxis 5723, which is the writing section or the grammar section of the exam. Now, I chose this only because I had the specs ready, but this particular concept is assessed on every single grammar exam out there. So you can see here that number two under, this is part of the grammar in, conven in conventions, we're looking at demonstrate command of conventions of standard English under mechanics, and then we have errors in punctuation, and then we have commas. Now let me show you what an error using a comma looks like. One of the main errors I see regarding commas is what I call a comma splice, and these are incorrect uses of commas. Let's take a look at the sentence. They were very excited to see their dad. He had been away for three weeks and we have it separated by this comma here. Now this is called a comma splice because the comma is separating two independent clauses incorrectly. And that's what we call a comma splice. So we have an independent clause here and an independent clause here. Let me just recap what an independent clause is. An independent clause is something that can stand on its own. So if I were just to say, they were very excited to see their dad, that could stand on its own as a sentence, right? They is the subject, were very excited is the verb or the predicate. They were very excited to see their dad. You could put a period there, it could stand on its own. Now the second part here, he had been away for, th for three weeks, he is the subject, had been away, is the predicate, he had been away for three weeks, is an independent clause. So on both sides of the comma, we have these independent clauses. And the comma is weak, so I'm just gonna put comma equals weak. The comma alone is weak. It cannot separate two independent clauses. I see people do this in their writing and I see this on exams all the time. So whenever you're looking at your exam or editing your writing, always take a look on both sides of the punctuation. In this case, we have a comma. We wanna make sure that we're not separating two independent clauses with the comma. Let me show you how to fix this. The most obvious fix is simply putting a period in between the two independent clauses. They were very excited to see their dad, period. He had been away for three weeks. That's one fix. Another fix is you could use a semicolon. Semicolons are what I like to call strong punctuation, and they can separate two independent clauses on their own. So you can see here, they were excited to see their dad, semicolon, he had been away for three weeks. The semicolon here is used correctly because it is separating two independent clauses and they are related. You don't wanna just throw semicolons into two independent clauses that are not related, okay? This is related, so it's appropriate here. Now remember, you're never gonna use a semicolon and, no, semicolon but, semicolon so. The semicolon stands on its own and the only way to use a semicolon, the only way to use a semicolon is to separate two related independent clauses, okay? So be very careful. If you see a semicolon on your grammar exam or in your writing, make sure you have two full sentences on both sides and that they are related, okay? And you don't have this semicolon and, semicolon but, that is incorrect. The semicolon just stays on its own, it's strong enough, it doesn't need any help from any conjunctions. Now another way to fix this sentence is simply by putting a subordinating conjunction in between the two independent clauses. Now a subordinating conjunction is a strong conjunction. So I like to match the S. Subordinating is a strong conjunction. And this will make more sense as I go through weaker conjunctions in just a second. 
because is considered a strong conjunction or a subordinating conjunction. Notice that I have, they were very excited to see their dad, an independent clause, because he had been away for three weeks, another independent clause. The because is strong enough to separate the two independent clauses and you do not need a comma. On the exam, if you see a comma because, that's a red flag, it's wrong and you should remove the comma when appropriate. So they were very excited to see their dad, independent clause, because strong subordinating conjunction, he had been away for three weeks. So that works there, no comma or punctuation needed. Now quickly, I just wanna review another way in which you could use because as a subordinating conjunction. What you can do is rearrange the sentence here and this is where the comma becomes appropriate in this situation. Now, notice that I rearranged the sentence. Because he had been away for three weeks, they were very excited to see their dad. All right, so I took the subordinating conjunction, stuck it in the beginning of the sentence, and then had the rest of the clause there. What I've done here is turned this into an intro clause. Because he had been away for three weeks, comma, pause, they were very excited to see their dad independent clause. Now, this right here becomes a dependent clause because it is dependent on the rest of the sentence. If I just walked up to you and said, because he had been away for three weeks and I walked away from you, you would be waiting for like the rest of the sentence, right? So when we take that subordinating conjunction and put it in the front, we do need this comma because a comma is strong enough to separate a dependent clause and an independent clause. For example, because the upcoming test was so important, comma, she studied for three weeks straight. She studied for three weeks straight is the independent clause. And because the upcoming test was so difficult, I think I said, um, that becomes your dependent clause. So a comma would work there. So notice how we put the subordinating conjunction in the front of the sentence. And yes, you can start a sentence with because in this way. You need that comma to separate the dependent clause and the independent clause. But when it's like this here, they were very excited to see their dad. He had been away for three weeks. That would be incorrect because it is separating two independent clauses. Now let's try another comma splice and I'm gonna show you another way to separate it. So we have another incorrect, we would put an X on this, comma splice. Some people tried to climb the mountain, they were not prepared. So again, we have this comma right here and it is wrong because we have an independent clause here. Some people tried to climb the mountain and they were not prepared. If I put a period after mountain, some people tried to climb the mountain, it would work on its own independently. They were not prepared, they is the subject, were not prepared is the predicate, that's an independent clause. The comma alone is too weak to separate this. So this would be incorrect and I would need to edit it. So again, a simple fix would be simply put a semicolon to separate the two independent clauses that are related or I could put a period and then capitalize this T here. Both of those work. But I'd like to talk to you quickly about coordinating conjunctions. Now remember, subordinating conjunctions, the S equals strong, right? Subordinating conjunctions don't need the help of a comma. Unless they're being put in the front of the sentence, there would be a comma at the end of that introductory clause. But if they're in the middle of the sentence, they do not need a comma, they are strong enough but coordinating conjunctions are weak. They do need the help of some punctuation. Let's take a look here. Some people tried to climb the mountain, independent clause, comma, but they were not prepared, independent clause. We have the comma, but there. So we said before that the comma splice is incorrect. That's when the comma alone is separating two independent clauses. But if I have this help of the coordinating conjunction, in this case, the word but, it is okay to use this, but you have to have the comma, but, comma, and. Let's take a look here. Some people tried to climb the mountain, another independent clause, comma, and they were not prepared correctly separating the two independent clauses. So the comma on its own would be incorrect. And let me just reiterate, the 
coordinating conjunction on its own would be incorrect because the coordinating conjunction is not strong enough. It needs that comma to separate two independent clauses. All right. Now, if I said this, some people tried to climb the mountain, but were not prepared. We do not need a comma there because were not prepared is not an independent clause. Were not prepared is a verb phrase. And in this case, we're not separating two full independent clauses and the but alone would be fine and the comma would be too much. So in this case, it would not be a run on. But if I have this they there, they were not prepared. Now I have two independent clauses and I must have the comma. All right. So in this case, we would add the comma or we could edit it so that we had the independent clause on one side. Some people tried to climb the mountain, but were not prepared. Same with this run on. Some people tried to climb the mountain and were not prepared. In that case, again, it is not a complete sentence on the other side of the coordinating conjunction, so you don't need the comma. But as soon as you add that subject, as soon as you have they were not prepared, they were not prepared, you need that comma conjunction, that comma coordinating conjunction. Now, let me give you a quick tip on how to memorize your coordinating conjunction. I like to use the acronym FAN boys. Fanboys stands for for and nor but or yet so. Now, most of the time on the test, you will see the and, the but, possibly the yet, definitely the so. These are the ones. Oh, and the or. The for and the nors, the F and the N, those typically come with old English. We don't use for and nors a lot when we're talking about um, sentences, although you might see something like, he was neither happy nor sad about the move. You might see something like that. Remember, neither goes with nor and either goes with or. I'll do another video on that at another time. But to remember your coordinating conjunctions, your weak conjunctions, you can use the acronym FANBOYS, for and, nor but, or yet and so. And remember to separate two full independent clauses, they must have a comma with them. Comma plus CC or coordinating conjunction equals strong. And in that case, it can separate two independent clauses. So I hope that clears things up for you regarding the comma splice. Remember, you gotta learn how to spot it and how to correct it for your grammar exam. Now, if you need help with your grammar exam or any praxis or teacher certification exam out there, we have tons of resources on our website. Go to KathleenJasper.com and you'll be able to find things to help you there. Also consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have questions about grammar, throw them in the comments below and I'll be happy to film about them. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. We have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing and following me on my social media networks at Kathleen Jasper. Have a great day. Thank you.